Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Hey, thank you for being with us. Uh, you didn't uh, stay home and watch the game. And for all those that are joining us online right now that decided to worship God and uh, not the NFL football, welcome. And it is awesome to have you with us. Hey, please stand as we close. As we, as we close. As we close. Well, that's not the nice last time. Well, that's what It's the timing. Yeah. Everything's off. Somewhere in the world, they're closing worship. afternoon and things are it's different for us but that's good we shake it up a little bit and it's great to be here with you in your house father to get the chance to worship you father be with this service today and um, I pray we leave here stronger be with those right now that are that are struggling God, that have challenges that are, that, are, that are heavy. Father, we pray for you. We pray to you for them now. And uh, we lift up those right now that couldn't be with us today. 
I know there's a lot of sickness going along. So if we pray for those, Father, may healing be abound. We dedicate this service as always we do in the precious name, precious name of Jesus. The smiter is not safe, but I know that I gotta make a change. I don't care if I break, at least I'll be feeling something. It's just okay, it's not enough. Help me fight through the nothingness of life. Are we, re- <laughs> Are we ready to not go through the motions? All right, please be seated. You're next. <laughs> I think we're going to have to make this informal. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Hey, you're not done yet. You're not done. 
No, you're not. I'm just waiting. <laughs> oh, I'm not doing that yet. Ah, oh, hey, I'm glad you're all here. <laughs> At least physically for some I overslept this morning. <laughs> I know, I woke up and it's like, I didn't set the clock. And then it's like, oh, I can sleep. I don't have to get up. But it felt weird all day. And then it's like, what if it's not this Sunday? <laughs> and then you had to go through the mind. Anyway, do what? I had two yesterday, but we'll get to that. Ah, we want to know that you're here. So sign your little black book that's in your chair with you. If you're watching online, let us know you're out there by saying hi to, to Ray and Tasha and uh, Linda. All the whites back there in the corner, they'll say hi back. Hi back. <laughs> also, I don't know what the next slide is. We have a new order, and I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> Next slide. I don't remember what's next. Oh, how can we pray for you? <laughs> we're going to need prayer up here. We're going to need. praying for us. Exactly. Uh, we are a church of prayer, which we'll be talking about a lot tonight. So in the back of the chairs, there's your prayer cards. So if you would fill that out with any prayer requests or praises that you have, just drop it in the box in the back of the room. If you're watching online, you can do the same thing by just emailing us at prayer at scottstillcc.com. Or you can just click on the little message button there and send us your prayer request. And then on Wednesday night, when we all come together at 6 o'clock, we'll pray for each of those uh, uh, prayer requests and celebrate each of those praises. So think about joining us on Wednesday night for our midweek prayer service. Next is Beyond 52. Last week I gave you this little piece of paper to fill out. I figured a lot of you would forget it. So I put it back in your bulletin again this week. It's really, think, take some time and think about this. And put your name on it. The few I got, because I didn't have the spot for the name on it, I have no idea who to talk to on some of the stuff I got in. So make sure you put your name on it so we, I can get with you to find out what it's all about. We are doing a sock drive for Shoebox Ministry. There's a bucket right out there in the lobby. Just bring in new... Men or women's socks, you, you, I needed to put that there. Trust me, I needed to put that there. <laughs> Don't laugh. But we will be collecting those through the end of February, and we'll be taking those to Shoebox Ministry. They put together shoeboxes for the homeless and for the domestic violence uh, shelters and things like that. And socks, new socks are just a comfort. So start bringing in socks for that. Also, we got Bible studies starting. So if you haven't picked one, now's a great time. It's a new year. They're on the back of your bulletin. We are trying to start a new one called Discipleship Journeys with Jesus uh, that Linda and Ray is back here are getting together. Uh, if you're not in one or if you're looking for another one or looking to change, this is a great study. It's got some videos. It's very Bible-based. Uh, we don't know the exact time. We're kind of deciding who's interested, and then we'll pick a time from there. But it is, we got a little video from them. That kind of shows you what the videos will look like and what it kind of explains the, the study. So we're going to play that video right now. Hi, I wanted to welcome you to Discipleship Journeys with Jesus. And I'm here in the ancient city of Ephesus on some terrace homes. They're incredible. They're where folks lived way back in the days of the Bible and soon afterward. And they remind us of the purpose of discipleship journeys, and that is to help gather people together, oftentimes in homes, but it may be other places, to study the Bible together. You know, discipleship journeys with Jesus, I believe, is a unique resource that can help you so much. First, it's based upon journeys in the Bible and includes these videos so that people can visualize what we're studying and talking about. Next. It's made with tracks to run on to make discipleship doable for everyone. It's easy to use and it gives you a direction to head in. Another thing about the discipleship journeys is they're interdenominational, so we're not going to be looking at this angle or this angle. It's all right from the Bible and people will agree on what the lessons are teaching. Another aspect are our translations. We're being translated into many languages. 
and it can be used in many different settings, as we've said. It could be in a classroom. It could be in a home school. It could be family devotions. It could be a one-on-one. -on -one. It could be a husband and wife. Many different applications for you. Finally, the best of all, perhaps, is it's all free because it's been paid for by our donors and we're supported by generous people that allow us to offer this resource to you to use without charge. So I hope you'll take advantage, check out our ministry, and enjoy Discipleship Journeys with Jesus. And it is one of those ministries when they were doing the development, we were one of the sponsors that helped and donated some money to help. We really believe in that, in the way it's set up. It is truly Bible-based. It is truly easy to follow, and it's a great study for beginners or somebody who's been around for a while. So see Ray and Linda. They can even get a Zoom call going, Facebook people. <laughs> so just get with Linda. If you're on Facebook, just uh, in comments, say, hey, Linda, talk to me about this, and she will. So anyway, so let's get, uh, just sign up if you're interested in that. Next is offering. <laughs> I have just no idea because I rearranged no, all right. of them. <laughs> did you take your medicine? I did not. Okay. I blame it on my, I got my COVID shot booster on Thursday. That's the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> but it made me sick. Mm. It made me, I, I, not sick sick. I just had no energy for two days. In fact, Friday I stayed in bed literally all day. But anyway, so I'm saying that's messing with my brain. That's the excuse I'm using. I have COVID. I have COVID booster brain. <laughs> anyway, it's time for our offering. So if you're in the building, there's little envelopes in the back of your chairs. You can just drop your offering in the box back here in the back, or you can do Zelle. You can do PayPal. You can go to our website, and it'll tell you all the different ways. If you're watching a lot, I'll even come get it for you. It may take me a little while, like Darlene will tell you that it does, but I will get there <laughs> soon. Uh, so let's just pray for our offering this morning. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to come before you and worship you in this way. We thank you for being our great provider. And this afternoon, we asked you to bless this offering so that we can use it to build your kingdom. Give us as leaders and church family wisdom and guidance on how you want us to use this to be your hands and feet in our community. So, Father God, we thank you. And we always know that everything we have comes from you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, we're going to prepare for communion now. If you're at home and um, if you want to take a time now to get a cracker or some juice or however you take the emblems of communion. Are you hurting and broke? Overwhelmed by the way Jesus is called Have you come to the end of the sun? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Oh, come to 
cross as you wait for the crown tell the world of the treasure you found that doesn't quite seem synonymous or certainly very easy to do bearing the cross yet telling the world of the treasure that we found in Jesus well just because we're Christians doesn't mean that we don't still have crosses to carry and God allows us 
to have those crosses still to carry, but he equips us with the grace and the mercy needed to carry it when we derive that strength from him. Judas had a place at the Last Supper. Jesus knew he was the deceiver, and he knew that that was the role that had to be played for the fulfillment of what was to come. And uh, Paul asked for the thorn to be removed from his side. Whatever the thorn was, an affliction, um, pain, we don't really know that. But he asked multiple times, and multiple times he was told, my grace is sufficient for you. And even our Savior, who took to the cross for all of our iniquities, the sins of the world, even in his story, and what we know is his eternity and majesty, and um, that he is the king, even he had to take the cross. So when we're in these times right now, and it's hard to sometimes fix our eyes on what is good and, and what is positive, when we're in a world that screams about what is negative, when we feel the weight, when we carry our crosses at a time right now where we know a lot of people that are sick, and certainly all of us that have things that we carry. It's a good reminder at this time of communion that we have the presence of Jesus, and that is unwavering, and it is always with us. And we have ways in which we can feel that. We have our worship, which we just partake in right now. And we have our praise, which we're going to talk about here in this service. And certainly, we have the fellowship inside this building and outside, and the joy and the camaraderie that we get from that. But we do have our communion. And at this time, we're going to take that together. Heavenly Father, I pray on this day that feels strange. I pray that everybody who's with us today and not with us, God, feels your presence. And it's a comfort to know that those that have gone before us have had to carry their crosses, but they, that they still seek you. And it's a comfort to know, Jesus, that you took it all on the cross for us. So that pain can be lifted up to you, God. And in return, you hope to fill us with your mercy, your love, for hope, for joy, and for us to spill that over onto others around us that we love, God. So we take these emblems today, the bread that we're going to take representing the body of Jesus, the juice representing his blood poured out for the forgiveness of our sins, but not just that, for us to feel loved and held, to have joy, and to have a reason to step into today and into tomorrow, knowing how much we are loved. And may we find comfort in that. May we remember your presence here with us at communion today, God. And may we pour that love onto others. It's in Jesus' name we pray. brings the God who created this earth to the rescue of those that he's given worth. It's the light in the darkness when hope has been lost, the whisper that calms us when our souls have been tossed. Prayer helps the healing of hearts that are broken by bringing to God things yet to be spoken. It brings out emotion from deep down inside and lays bare our sin that's dripping with pride. So often our prayers are focused on us, what I need and I want becomes all the fuss. But the order of focus has been set by the king. Seek first his kingdom and he'll add all these things. So use less of the eyes and replace them with praise. Your kingdom, your glory, through all of my days. This is his will we know from his word. And when we pray in this way, we know what we heard. 
When anxiety turns the focus to me, the scripture reminds us to bow down our knee. If we're happy or hungry, whether we're cold and alone, with thanksgiving we're told to turn to the throne. For there sits our Savior who's paid all our debt, who looks down and wonders why we all fret. Because his promise stands true to this day and forever. When we call on his name, he will leave us never. So today and tomorrow, as your story is written, when you laugh or you cry or your heart is smitten, remember the one who gives you each breath. Whatever your lot, he saved you from death. So in everything you do, remember his name, because whenever we pray, it gives him the fame. And that, in the end, is where we must start, because only in him will he heal our heart. Do not be anxious about anything. That's so easy, right? <laughs> well, good afternoon again. Today we're going to do things a little different. As if meeting here at 4 o'clock in the afternoon isn't different enough. It's just been, a, you know, we're going to thought we'd try something a little different. As you know, we meet on Wednesday night for our prayer service. And today we're going to talk about the power of prayer. But since we are meeting at night or almost night, we thought we would give everybody, they don't normally come on Wednesday night, a sample of what our Wednesday night prayer service is like. Phil usually leads those prayer services on Wednesday night, and he was going to lead today, but they are in quarantine. They're not sick, but they have been exposed, and so they are staying in. We thought that was the safest thing, just to be on the safe side. So yesterday, I, everybody turn back and say hi to Phil and Lou. Wish you were here. Because <laughs> I was going to sit there. No. <laughs> now you know why I'm thrown off today. It's all Phil's fault. <laughs> like I said, they're not sick, but they are. Um, they have been exposed, but they will be here Wednesday probably. Uh, they will get tested and all that kind of good stuff, but just not today. So on Wednesday night, when we come together, we always start the night off with an opening prayer. So let's start with prayer. Father God, we come to you today for this special time. This special time that we humbly come before you. We ask that you fill this room with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with the love and desire and the knowledge that you are, the, you are, you are real. And all things are possible through you. So through this service, may our eyes and our hearts be open to you, and only to you. And may we see how you work in our lives. So today, as we pray, we pray in Jesus' name, and in his wonderful thankfulness of what he did for us on the cross. Amen. Amen. Our church believes in the power of prayer. We talk about it a lot. That's why we asked every week for you to fill out those prayer cards like we did earlier today. What's on your heart? What concerns do you have? What kind of things has God answered in your life? And then on Wednesday, that's why we have this special service. So that we can take those cards and those requests and those concerns and those praises and we can take each one individually and we can lift that up for God, to God, on your behalf. We believe that every week we should be focused on prayer. We also believe the strength of our church depends on how focused we are in prayer. In John 14, Jesus gives, an, uh, gives us an invitation to pray and to ask our request in his name. The phrase, in Jesus' name, is not some divine magical phrase that you can add to the end of your prayer to make it magical or to make it work. 
or to get what you want. In Jesus' name, it's not like open sesame or abracadabra to get to the kingdom of God. Praying in Jesus' names means praying with his authority and asking God the Father to act upon our prayer request because we come to him in the name of his Son, Jesus. Praying in Jesus' name means praying in accordance to Jesus' nature, to his character, and in the will of God. How many of us think about that when we put in a request? Is it in accordance to Jesus' nature or his character? Or does it fit into the will of God? Or is it just something I want? That I need? That I need that person to do? In reality, God does not say yes to every one of our prayers. Obviously, some prayers are selfish and not in line with God's will or his nature or his character. And we need to keep that in mind. But what about those that do appear to be in line with him? That do line up to his nature and character? The ones that we just know we need answered. Sometimes we just don't know or understand the will of God. Sometimes we just have to trust that God's will is enough. And that if his answer is no, or if it's slow in coming, that he knows what he's doing. But God does answer a lot of our prayers. I think sometimes we take that for granted. We ask, we get, we move on to the next request. But how many times do we actually sit down and make a list even? Or just to think about it, what has God done for me? How many times have I asked and he's given? How many times do we recognize those praises and, the cel and celebrate those and share them with each other? We have to remember that God is God. God knows best. God is always in control of all things. Psalms 104 gives us this great picture of God and what he looks like and how he acts and how we should respond to that. So let's look at Psalms 104 this morning or this evening, this afternoon. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at it now. I like that. <laughs> Psalms 104. Praise, my, praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messenger, flames of fire his servants. He set the earth on its foundation. It can never be moved. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke, I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. But may sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is what our Wednesday night is all about. That's what we come here to do when we come to to him in prayer. And we do it as a, as a group, as a church family. It becomes so much more powerful. Maybe not in getting the prayers answered, but it becomes more powerful for us because we get to experience the Holy Spirit at work in us, around us. It becomes part of us. That time 
that joy, that praising. Every week during our prayer time, at the beginning we share a verse like we just did. But then we take a couple of minutes before we start asking God for things that we want. We take a couple of minutes to be still, to be quiet, to clear our minds so that we can connect with God, so that we can allow the Holy Spirit to fill us and to control us for that time and to guide us, to take a couple of minutes to thank Him for all that He's doing in each of our lives and then lay our request at His feet. So I want us to do that this afternoon. For the next couple of minutes, I want us to have that moment of silence, that time of connection, just to connect with God, to connect with the Holy Spirit, to connect with Jesus, and to focus on His power. So let's do that for the next couple of minutes. Father God, fill our minds, fill our hearts, fill our souls with you right now. Let us feel the Holy Spirit fill this room. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to lead us over the next half hour. Father God, keep our eyes and our hearts and our minds open to the things we can experience when we allow ourselves to be quiet and still. Father God, hear our prayers. Hear our praises. In Jesus' name, amen. It's not always easy to be quiet and still. The first minute it was nice and quiet in here. Then you start hearing the rustling, <laughs> where people are beginning to get a little uncomfortable. It's because we don't do that enough. We're not used to being still and just listening or allowing God to control us because we want to be in control. But it's a great exercise. Just, just go off in your quiet space and just be quiet. And just try to spend as much time in that moment as you can. After we do that on Wednesday night, we take all your prayer requests from the Sunday in that week that we received, whether through 
the box back here, email or phone calls, Facebook. And we pray for each and every one of those. So if you fill out a prayer request on Sunday, you can feel very confident that on Wednesday night, we will be lifting it up in prayer. And those praises, we celebrate those too. We love to see those. But today we're going to do it a little different than we do on Wednesday night. Today we're going to be talking about answered prayers. We've all experienced those. We've all experienced them over the past year. Remember last week when I had you all get out a card and write on there what prayers had been answered? They're here. <laughs> I told you they would pop up somewhere. Over the last year, we have seen on our Wednesday night prayer so many things that have been answered. We've seen God working. We didn't always get the answer we thought we would get. Sometimes he surprises us in a different way or a better way. Or gives us a way to understand when he says no. Or different. I'll do it this way. But today we're going to celebrate some of those. And I'm also going to give you a chance here in this room. To share some of yours. So let's just start on the back of your bulletin. I'm not going to go in order. Because <laughs> that would make it too easy, right? So let's share with some of our prayer requests from this past year. Let's, pray, let's, let's talk about God's provisions for SEC in 2021. How much he has done for us as a church. How he's brought us new people. How he's sustained us to be able to have this building and to be able to do the things we've done. God's provisions for us as a church has been amazing to watch. We were praying this time last year for young people. And what were we going to do if we got young people? Who was going to lead them? God answered that prayer. We're starting a new, a new young adults ministry. And God even sent us some leaders, Zach and Asia. That's something to celebrate. I had a nephew that got COVID back in September. On many, many nights on Wednesday night, I didn't think he would make it. He was in the hospital for three and a half months on all kinds of life supports. The family called in seven different times that he wasn't going to make it. But today, he's home. And there is no medical reason to say he should be home. He's got a long way to go. But he's mentally, he's, he's walking, he's with his son, he's with his wife. Still going to have some struggles, but he wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God answering our prayers. Our prayers in this church. Now, we weren't the only ones praying for him, but there's power. Do what? His lungs are working. He is on a little bit of oxygen at night. Praise God. So how many of you had a prayer answered this year? I'm going to get you a chance to share them. Are we on with this one? Yeah, it is. Now there's going to be some rules. <laughs> we don't want a life story. <laughs> we don't want all the details. <laughs> That's right. Paul is not here. I'm going to make sure he got that because I know he's watching. <laughs> Keep it short, because last week we had a really long service, so this week I'm going to blame you if it is. So, who would like to share a praise from last year? Oh, don't be shy. I'm going to make Rego first. 
<laughs> I'm trying Since. to keep. Hello, hello, hello. Everybody hear me okay? I don't know if anybody's noticed, but I've walked up here without a cane <laughs> and without a boot on. Okay, so my first super... You got Hello. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if anybody noticed, but when I walked up here, I didn't have a cane and I didn't have my boot on. I'm still <laughs> dealing with that. <laughs> so I guess I could say that's my first praise about praying. I know this group last year for uh, three, four months was praying for me because I wasn't in here. Uh, I was at home stuck in bed. And that was just awesome. I mean... The, the healing went so much better than I anticipated, or I think even the doctors anticipated. Uh, and when the, the healing was done, the doctor said, okay, I don't want to see you again. <laughs> so it was a great thing. But if it wasn't for the prayer meeting, um, it may not have gone so well. In fact, I'll, I'll bet, no, what is it? Something the donuts. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, I probably would have still been in bed for toward the end of the year. But thank the Lord for that. Uh, quick message. I thought I'd pass this on for a voice from Phil. Hi, everyone. <laughs> he said something to you, but you can read it. Oh, okay, okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> Phil said, I heard all that, Tom Malone. <laughs> okay, so I wrote down a couple other things while I was just sitting back there going, you know, I'm thankful for. Back in 2019, October, I walked in my kitchen, stepped on the stable. Within a couple of days, I got a staph infection in my leg. They put me in the hospital for five days. Then I spent the next six, seven months, this was before the prayer meeting, but I knew people were praying for me. So I was in bed. Um, my biggest concern is I was not here. I was stuck in bed. And you know, I would pray, like, there's got to be a way I can help. There's something I can do from my bed. Well, we now call it the online ministry, I guess, or Facebook people, the White Family. <laughs> you know, um, but God put that in my lap. It said, "Hey, you can do this," and you start interacting with people, and you find out you're talking to people all over the world, including Godfrey in Africa. Wow. So that's awesome. And one more short story. This has to do with a job. So. Uh, Obviously, I've had some foot problems and things like that. My old job put me on kind of a desk job at home, which was I'm very thankful for. The Lord took good care of us. We were enough to pay our bills, money-wise. So that worked out very well. But it was just kind of time to move on. So I applied for this job in uh, 2020, like around October-ish. Boy, October seems to be a day. Anyway, uh you know, I was like, what are two people for it? I knew this job really well. And I'm like, I should be able to get this job. And I was praying about it, obviously. I didn't get it. <laughs> it's like, oh my, I wonder what happened there. Well, sometimes you got to step back a little bit and look at the bigger picture. Okay, so come in 2021, I applied for that same job again. And in November, I got it. So I've been working there since. But here's what I think happened. You know, God takes good care of us. He's got a bigger plan than, you know, our narrow minds can sometimes see. But uh, I lost that interview. But then I went into 2021, which was a pretty hard year for us. You know, we lost, we lost Nathaniel. God got us through that. I had two surgeries on my feet. You know, put me in bed for three or four months. And then that job opportunity popped up again. You know, I really believe God knew in 2020. He says, yeah, I'm not going to give you that job yet because you're going to be in the hospital. I'm going to take care of you there too, but I'll get you the job later. Hence, I got the job later. Amen. Amen. I want that Thank back. you very much. <laughs> All right, who else? I know I saw hands when I said who had praises. Y'all are a bunch of shy people. Well, just remember that on prayer night, you always sell it, but they don't have to talk. They don't have to talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Unless you're elders, and then I can make you talk. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna go up there. No. Because. All right, but. Um, you don't know me. Oh, wow. I'm one of the elders here. I'm, my name is Eddie Wallace, and uh, I've been coming here to Scottsdale Christian Church forever, and um, all different loca different locations we're at. But one of our biggest praises is this church never quit. And I was here, Tom and I came and looked at this building. We couldn't find anything. We didn't know what the Lord had in store. We didn't know if he wanted us just to hang it up. But when we walked in here, it was like, this is what I was waiting to show you guys. And look at this place. You would not, we should have took pictures of what this place looked like. Oh, do we? But. We didn't quit because the Lord doesn't wasn't want people to quit because you're going to get drugged through a lot of stuff, right? But he needs to drag us through those things so we can appreciate all the stuff that we went through and he brings us out like this. And this is one of our my wife and I's biggest praises that we kept this church going and we're we're blessed with that. The other thing, one other thing, we escaped COVID all in 2021. So this is a new year. Don't know, but I think the Lord's got a lot of plans for us. That's it. And he's curing Eddie of cancer, too. Let's not forget that. <laughs> you forgot the big one, or a big one. Anybody else? I'm not going to stick it in your face. I'm going to read some, though. Jace, you have one? <laughs> I'll give you one more shot after I read some of these. <laughs> you ain't scared. <laughs> I ain't scared of nothing. I got God on my side. Hey, there you go. Okay. Those who don't know me, my name is Jace. I am one of the carpenters of this and the last three churches we've worked on with, with Mike Farr over there and Larry. Um, it's been three months. Three months ago, my back dropped me to the floor. And I mean, I was crawling on the floor, laying in the fetal position. I couldn't move. I was in screaming pain. And the good praise is my wife didn't kick me every time she walked over me. I was everywhere, just on the floor. And I advanced up to a walker or a cane. And finally, I got rid of the cane. So, you know, got a little cocky. You know, two weeks ago, he put me back in the hospital. I've got blood clots from my ankles all the way up to my neck. They're in my lungs, my uh, digestive system, all the way down my leg. And Wednesday, I'll find out how far up they are. But and I'm like, don't blood clots in the lungs kill you? My doctor says, yeah. Is that not a praise? That's a praise. Amen. So. And you didn't let us know all this was going on either. That's the best part. Faith or what? That's, yeah, but, we, but you're supposed to let us help, you help, let us help carry you. <laughs> uh huh. We'd have done it again, too. <laughs> we would have come and kicked you while you were down. <laughs> so here's some of the praises we got last week. Praise God who has blessed us so richly with health and safety all year. That's from Elaine. So where's she at? She's hiding somewhere. Praise God for, uh, for family being COVID-free in 2021. And that mom is with the Lord. Paul Walter. Praises that my wife and I escaped COVID last year and I have been working steadily. We stayed healthy. Our family was together for the holidays. My niece moved to Arizona. We have food on our table and a roof over our head. 
Anonymous gives us lots of prayer requests and lots of praises. Praise that I was able to visit my sister Judy and Sheila and take care of them. I'll add that to this one, Jenny Watts. Praise 2021 was a year of healing, stepping out in faith, growing as a family, provisions, blessing over our sons, only by the grace and mercy of Jesus, all praise and glory. The Harwoods. Praise for answered prayers for safe travels, that my daughters are more united, health for people, service provided by our church, successful surgeries. She has a whole list. The younger people are coming to our church, servicing that I needed to do, she has now found. We're starting a young adults group. This is Helen. Praise you, Lord, for healing my husband, our renewed health journey, our family and their health. Anonymous again. Praise God for another year of provisions. Thank God for keeping our family safe and healthy. There seems to be a theme there, doesn't it? Anonymous. Praise for our parents and siblings, their love and their experiences we share. Anonymous. Praise God for his healing the past year that my heart, breathing, bladder, and acid reflux issues are all under control for today, for my sister and friends who all tested negative for COVID, and for Christian, Leona. Praise God, answered prayer for my brother John to be saved and quit drinking. Also, God answered my blind neighbor's prayer to send someone to read the Bible to her, Vivian. Praise for God's answers to prayer. My son and his family were approved for a new home. My other son had a daughter, and I got a new car, Ginger. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord led me to SEC and two wonderful Bible studies. Praise he's tangibly provided for me in, the amaz in, in amazing ways. Glennie, we're glad you're here too. That's an answered prayer for us. God finally took mom to heaven in July. His praise of the year. Pam. Amen. That was a biggie for her. The conversations I had with her a couple of weeks, that's what she wanted. That's what she was praying for. Pray for a, uh, praise for a new job and a move to Flagstaff. For about a year, we were praying for Vanessa to get a new job. And to be able to move to Boston. <laughs> God answers our prayers, but sometimes he changes it up a little bit. She loves her job. She loves living in Flagstaff. She's doing great. We miss her. If she's watching, we miss her. But wow. And this is just the ones that people let me know. We have seen so many prayers answered. In this church, many of us, our prayers answered. This church was an answer for so many of our prayers. Prayer is important. Being part of this close-knit praying family is important. Absolutely. What you just experienced... It's kind of what we do on Wednesday night. Only instead of it all being praises, we talk about the request. And we get updates. And we find out each week as we get the new prayer request how someone is doing that we prayed for last week. And we can see that progress. Or we see, like in my nephew's case, him getting worse. And then all of a sudden, when all hope is lost... And they're saying he's not going to make it. Ten days later, he's done a complete, what is it, 360? 180, whatever that is. <laughs> it just shows us that when it's all in God's timing. And sometimes, like in Vanessa's case, he changes it around. I'm going to answer it, but I'm going to do it this way because I know this is the better way. 
And sometimes we miss the answered prayer when we look for the answer. Oh, he didn't answer my prayer to go to Boston. But sometimes his, his way, his will is better than our way. And when we come here on Wednesday night as a prayer group, as a prayer family, we get to see God truly working. I encourage you to do that with us. Come be part of it. I only make elders talk if they want to. <laughs> and Phil's even nicer. He don't even make them talk. Prayer is important. It's the heart of our faith. Today we celebrate just a small portion of the answered prayers that God has done for us the last year. But we also have some we're still waiting to be answered. Some of those prayer requests we've been praying over the last year, we still don't have answers for. And sometimes we've seen the answer no pop up. Sometimes we don't understand that. It's not clear to us why God said no or why he's making us wait. And sometimes we just don't understand why God isn't answering our prayers. And sometimes we may even get a little mad about it. God knows us. He knows we're going to get mad if he tells us no. What little kid doesn't get mad when you tell him no? <laughs> sometimes the father knows best. So keep that in mind when you're praying, when you're sending up your request. Keep that in mind. Sometimes our prayers, especially for other people, is not just us and God involved here. Sometimes that other person that we're praying for, it involves them too and their willingness. It it includes they're willing to adapt to what you are praying for. They may not be ready. They may not want what you're praying for them. They may not want to go to heaven. They may not want salvation. Or they may just not be ready for it. Or what you're praying for may require someone else's life to change. Something that you pray for could mean taking it away from someone else. We don't know sometimes what, what's the consequences of the world. What's the ripple effect of our prayer request? And sometimes I think we need to keep that in mind. That sometimes it's more than just us and God involved in our prayer request. And then, we also got to remember that Satan is real. And he's going to get in there in between us and God every chance he gets. Especially when it involves other people. He is going to try to manipulate and deceive and twist things around and make you not see God answered your prayer. Or not, see, not to see that the way he answered it is better. Even the prophet Daniel had problems with Satan interfering. Are we, and Daniel was a pretty good guy. I wouldn't want to, you know, compare lies with him. If you want to read about that, it's in Daniel 10. You that's been coming on Wednesday or Sunday and doing Daniel study probably remember that story. The also thing I want you to remember about not uh, prayers that hadn't been answered yet. Don't give up. Be persistent. God likes that. He likes for us to be persistent. But also remember that sometimes, even when our prayers are in Jesus' name and in line with Him, God's perfect timing for answering those prayers may not have yet come. If He answered it today, it wouldn't have the effect that it will have a month from now, Ray, a year from now. If Ray had gotten that job a year ago and then had to take three or four months off, do you think he would, being the new employee, might have lost it? Sometimes God's timing is better than what we think. 
because he can see into the future. He knows what's going to happen. He knows what we're going to go through. His timing is better than ours. But don't give up. Be persistent. God's perfect timing for answering those prayers may not yet have come. In Revelation 6, the souls of the martyrs asked God for justice for what they'd been through and what they were put through. But God told them to wait a little longer until His purposes were fulfilled. So we've got to be the same. Not that we give up, but we're patient and we just know that He knows best and that His timing is better than ours. We all have prayers that fall into this category. And some of you probably put those in this week, just a few minutes ago or will when you walk out the door. Some of those that you've put in week after eight week, asking for healing or that someone be saved or something change or a new job or whatever it is, and we just continue to ask to seem like the same questions to God, the same request. I encourage you to continue to do that. Be persistent. But to help with those prayer requests, we're going to start something a little different starting this Wednesday night. Don't uh, me. <laughs> Out in the lobby, you're going to see that little gray box sitting there by the TV with this on the front of it. This is for that prayer and for that person or whatever it is that we just, we want to put out there. We know it's not going to be answered this week. We know it's going to be a battle. We know it's going to be there for a long time. And so on this is, you know, it's, and that's what these prayer cards are for. It's not your regular weekly one. So you'll fill it out and you drop it in that little box. And on Wednesday night, we'll take those. We're going to pass those out between us. And we're individually going to pray over that specific prayer. And then what we've named our little God box here, that prayer request is going to go in that box. And stay right there in God's hands all week long. The next Wednesday, we're going to take it right back out again. And we're going to initially date it every week. And cover this card if we have to with times that we prayed for this person or this experience or whatever it is. It doesn't mean you can't put it on the other card too, but just knowing that this is something that's every week, some person, a different person is going to touch this card and pray over it. And it'll give us a chance. Sometimes the, the praying out loud, and all, it gets us involved because we're not praying out loud, but we're getting very involved. May want to do it as little groups. Two or three of you get together. So during that quiet time at the beginning, it's a core we'll do some of this. Things like my friend Dave, a lot of your friend Dave, needs a kidney. It's going to be a long battle. So I'm going to fill out one for Dave. Or a friend of ours that's Debbie, who's got Alzheimer's. She's going to have a long battle. I'm going to fill out a card for her too. So I invite you, encourage you, if you've got that person, the person that needs salvation, that you've been praying for and you continue to pray for, fill out a card. If you've got someone that needs healing, fill out a card. If you need someone delivered from addiction, fill out a card. Or whatever it is that you just know it's not going to get answered in a one-time request. Fill out a card and leave it in that box. But then I want you to do something else. When that prayer gets answered, I want you to fill out another card. Because there's another box here that says prayer answered. So on that Wednesday night when we pull and we start matching cards up, all this card that we've seen, we've prayed for for the last six months, and we see prayer answered. And we get to celebrate. So remember, and you, we're out there all the time. So fill out your card, drop it in that little silver box, and it'll be part of our Wednesday night prayer service. 
I encourage you to join us on Wednesday nights. It's a powerful time. The Holy Spirit is here. We see God work through prayer each and every week. We see the tears. We see the joy. We experience God. Prayer is important for our church and for each of us. If we want a strong church, we have to be a praying church. Not just in name, but in our actions. Watching God work in other people's lives and in our church is exciting. How many of you got felt good when Ray said, I'm up here without a cane, without a boot? Yeah, awesome. I know how people reacted to, my, to Travis's story. Because I admit, there was Wednesday nights when I admitted that I didn't think he would make it. When I went home for Thanksgiving, I carried funeral clothes because I didn't think he'd make it that week. I thought I would be going to a funeral that week. But God is bigger, has power, more powerful than we know. Coming together as a church family, lifting each other up, is powerful. It makes our church stronger. When you're going through rough stuff, having me or the elders or your fellow church family praying with you, praying over you, anointing you with oil like the Bible tells us to do, it's powerful. Don't miss out on the power of prayer and the healing that it brings when we come together as a family. Don't miss out on being part of this church family. Wednesday night is probably more powerful than Sunday mornings in a lot of ways. Because it's very, I mean, on Sunday morning we usually talk about the Bible and what, you know, but we, on Wednesday night, we see lives, individuals being affected. And we see the expression on people's faces when, we, when it happens. We serve a great God. So let's celebrate what he's doing in our lives. The praise team is going to come back up. That psalm that I read to you, Psalms 104, this song we're fixing to sing as you stand up to sing and praise with me. Right now? Right now. We serve a great God. Let's worship him right now. The splendor of the King is clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself.
sing this out. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. I don't know where everybody, whoops, am I on? Yeah, you're yeah, on. Yeah. Where everybody stands today with their beliefs in God, their belief in prayer, their belief in things can change and how they can change. If you have any questions or any concerns or, or this Jesus thing is just not understandable to you, don't leave today without talking to me. Or if you're watching online, reach out to me, call me drop by the office when you see God work it changes you when you experience the power that he can does around us and for us it changes us so today as you leave this building leave with knowing that the power of Jesus is going with you and the healing is going with you and the salvation is going with you so let's end with prayer Father God we come to you with praise today as we look back over our lives, not just the last year, but our lives and those around us. We see your hand at work. We've seen miracles happen. Many of us standing here in this room are miracles of yours. Father God, let us stay focused on you. Father God, today, each of us is within the hearing of my voice, has something on their heart today. And I'm praying that we all have trust in you enough to lay that at your feet this afternoon. At this moment, whatever it is that we're feeling or, or struggling with or desiring, in Jesus' name, we're laying that at your feet, God. Father God, we ask for your provisions. And you tell us to come to you and ask in, his, in Jesus' name and you'll give us what our hearts desire if it's in your will. Let us be so in tune with you, God, in tune with Jesus, in tune with the Holy Spirit, that our prayer requests are things that you are just waiting for us to ask for so that you can bless it upon us. Father God, let us be a church that believes in prayer, comes together in prayer, and celebrates in prayer. Father God, we thank you for being you. We thank you for your son. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. And in Jesus' name, we all said, amen. 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 Y'all have a great afternoon. Go watch the games. Whatever you're going to do, pray for the Cardinals tomorrow night.